Hello, hello, and good morning. Here we are in the quarry, and today we will be trying to save some money by doing our own brakes. Brakes normally cost, I guess, a couple hundred, few hundred dollars to do. Um, the parts alone are very cheap, fairly cheap. Um, you could probably get brake pads for somewhere around 30 bucks you can get a new rotor I think I need one rotor rotors are anywhere from like 15 to 30 dollars so say if you spend a hundred dollars in parts and I'm going to show you in this video how easy it is to do how simple and um, yeah simple and easy how easy it is to do your brakes so come on along and I'll show you what to do all right so step one Get the right um, tool to take off the lug nuts. Don't lift up the car yet. What you're gonna want to do is break, uh, uh, break the lug nuts. Meaning, just make sure that they're. I already did it, so I was kind of cheating the first time. But make sure that they're loose before you jack up the car. Because once you jack up the car, um, if you do it, say if you're tightening it, it's just gonna spin. So. I jacked up the car already. I already loosened them. Forgot to record it, but you get the point. So, to jack up a car, the jack of the car depends, in, depends on the type of car that you have. Um, I would suggest following your owner's manual because you want to make sure that it's in a place that will not damage the car. A lot of new cars um, come with different types of jacks. They have to jack up in on the body or somewhere on the frame, but if you have a big old truck like this or anything, uh, you can just put it on the frame. But yeah, follow your instruction manual. And then what you're gonna want to do after you jack it up, take off all the lug nuts. And okay. so take off the lug nuts. And everybody should learn how to at least take a tire off and put one on because. We do get flat tires often on the side of the road and if you're out in the woods or out on the highway you really want to uh, risk breaking down and waiting for a tow truck or who knows what's going on. So a lot of times when you take the lug nuts off the rim is still stuck on there. If you can see you would think that would just pop off. Um, you just put something in there and pry it or kick it. Sometimes kicking, and sometimes it doesn't work. And that worked. Now you have the brakes. So these are your brake pads. You can see that the part. This is the rotor. This is the pad itself. So this piece in the middle is the brake pad. They're pretty good on this side, but I know the other side was sticking, so it wore it out. I heard the brake pads squealing, so I'm gonna replace them all. You want to do both sides at the same time. It's fairly cheap and easy, so I'll show you what to do. All right, so that's the brake rotor and You want to take off, look, that's the wrong size. Now one thing with sizes, make sure that you know the difference between metric and standard. And what it is, is they're ever slow, ever so slightly of a difference where if it's a tight bolt, you will strip it if it's the wrong size. So. These look like they're actually standard, half inch. I thought they would have been metric, but they're not. Um, and they're still light, it doesn't really matter. So you take off the two bolts from the caliper, and that's gonna remove this. That's where the brake pads are on. One trick that I do is I will compress the caliper just so slightly 
what I'm doing is I'm pushing in the piston. There's a piston in here that pushes the brake pads together, whoops, which uh, put pressure on the rotor. So I kind of opened up the brakes, like released them all the way. Get this stuff out. And these usually one side comes out first. I have to take the bolts out. See? So this caliber pushes these brake pads together. And going on this and that's what stops the car. So these pads are pretty good But like I said the other side these pistons don't flow. I got to take them apart and sand them clean them out and grease them So what was happening? It was uh, putting pressure on one side. So wearing down one side all the way All right. See So this caliper was on there take it off change the pads should be it. I want to put gloves on, but I forgot. The brake pads. This is the stop. This is the part that goes onto the rotor. Something like that. This is actually the inside one, but oh shoot. Yeah, so they fit in there. This will be on the other side. But this clamps down. This stops that. Um, one thing that you want to do is, besides put them on the right side, um, is it comes with the grease you just want to put it on the backs anywhere this padding is anywhere it makes contact with the uh, with the brake so just put grease on all of them on the inside of the tabs and, and here those are the parts that make contact so might as well have some little grease obviously you never put grease on the parts that are going to stop this is what the brake pads look like when they're in the brake rotor. So we're going to take this now. Oh, I think it's backwards. Hold on. So one thing I am also going to do is, first of all, not pay attention to that. That is not proper mechanics. Uh, it's not an authorized jack, but I'm just doing that just to swap out the tires. I'm taking the tire from the front. I'm going to swap it for the back. I put the back ones in the front. It's called the rotating the tires. That's how you do it. I'm going to put this one in the front. So what that does is the fronts wear differently than the backs. So you just keep them rotating so they eventually wear out even. So uh, I hope I don't forget which one goes where. Oh, the one with the grass. Stuck in the rim. That goes in the front because that's where I hit that bank. But anyway, let's continue. So here's the left side, the driver's side. I'm going to replace the rotor because this caliper has been sticking. I should probably get a new caliper, but I don't have the time today. So a lot of times you got to whack these off. That's easy. And it comes off like that. And then you just pull this off. It's literally that easy. This side's really warpy. Um, I might just keep it. I'm gonna keep this. It's It could be cut, it's not that bad. But because they're so cheap, I'm just gonna put the new one on. The new one on just goes on there. Um, I do need to, I'll show you something that's broken with this. That's the universal joint right here. If you could see in here. See how it's loose. Let's see. Yeah, see? That's loose. I'm going to have to fix that. I should fix it before I go on a long trip to Jersey City, but... Um, I'm not going to get into that. I don't have much time. So I'm going to put this back on, tighten it up, and uh, I just saved a few hundred dollars on brakes. Nice and simple. It's the new cal uh, brake rotor. This goes on here, nice and simple. The tires hold it on. Uh, but before I do that, I like to make sure there's no grease on it. Like my big grease fingers, you shouldn't probably use your greasy hands. But oh shoot. Um, I do want to get all the grease off. They put a protective film on there, so it's good to scuff up the uh, brake pads. I gotta do a little bit more now because I got grease on it, but you obviously don't want grease or any kind of material between 
the metal. So get off all that. You can use brake cleaner too, or you can just use uh, those sandpaper. Or I would use those um, sanding discs. Real quick, get that stuff off. So that's gonna be done. I'm gonna put that right back on there. One thing you want to avoid that I actually did. I left the uh, the bolt in the dirt, so I got a bunch of little bunch of little cacas on it. So I'm gonna have to clean that off and just make sure you don't have any dirt or rocks or anything on the bolt heads or the nuts because the uh, it might strip the the bolts. And when you strip bolts, it's not fun to put them back. So things like lug nuts on the ground, you shouldn't do. You should probably put stuff on a little tray or something. Also helps so you don't lose it. But it's been a long time since I've been working on cars. I was an auto mechanic probably 10 years going from working in chop shops, junkyards, mechanic shops, working on police cars. I've done it all. So now working on my own vehicles in a quarry. Like my hood strap. All right, since you bought the video on how to do your own brakes, I'm gonna throw in a complimentary video on how to change your oil. Just as easy as doing your brakes, probably a little easier. Just takes a little bit of oil, a wrench, and some magic. So lay underneath your car, look for the oil plug. It's gonna be on this bottom of the engine. Use your owner's manual if you can't find it. Uh, Get a socket on there, loosen it. I don't even know if this is upside down or not, but if it is a little tight, it's sometimes okay to put two wrenches. Then you can pull it. See? And then make sure you have, where the hell, heck am I looking here? There it is. Make sure you have a nice place to drain it. This is really hard to do with one hand. I have an old tray tin. I'm gonna from here pour it into a gallon jug and bring it to a, probably 80 shop. Santo Service Center, located in Union, New Jersey, 560 North Avenue, 908-352-6599. I believe that's their phone number. I used to have to call that a lot. I would call out of work. <laughs> All right. And there's the oil coming out. Black gold, people. Try not to drop your cell phone into it. So I'm gonna let this drain out. Once it stops, I'm gonna let it sit there for a while, let it all drip, 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 drip out. And then you just put the plug back on and tighten it and I'll show what you do up top. So now we have the oil draining. I'm letting it drip, drip, drip dry. I'm going to come up top here and I'm going to change the oil filter. That's this right here. You could usually um, just loosen these by hand, but if not, you could use a big wrench or something. Um, you could crush it by taking it off. You're going to put a new one on. When you put the new one on, it's only hand tight. So let's see. If, oh, yeah. So this is nice and loose. Not loose, but appropriate amount of tightness. And if you could see it below, the oil pan is still in there. Under there. Now, a great thing about Jeeps is they're so easy to work on. So, if you have a little Honda, oh boy, don't fall in there. If you have a little Honda or something, or a Ford, I'm pouring the oil right into the pan. Um, it might not be this easy to do. Uh, a lot of Hondas are actually, but some cars are just a pain in the butt to do stuff like this. My suggestion, don't buy those cars. You know, you're buying an investment. And if you could save money by doing a maintenance yourself on an easy vehicle. I mean, this thing's a 2003 and it's fairly easy to work on. See all the room in the engine compartment. Nice straight six tank motor. Uh, yeah, you know, invest in something that you could work on. Before I had this, I, you know, I, I used to be an auto mechanic and I, you know, could do the work myself. But... I had a BMW and it took, <laughs> the parts were twice as much and twice as hard to do. So 
get something simple, something that you can work on yourself and save yourself a lot of money. Let's put the oil filter back on. For the new filter, you want to get, oh, my finger can't fit. Get a little bit of oil on your fingertip, clean oil, and just rub the seal. If you don't do that, sometimes when you put it in, um, that seal could grab and it'll pull it out of the filter. It's kind of like just wedged in there. You can see that. So if you don't have it greased, it could hit the metal and just open up. Put this back on. Let's put the dip right now. So, putting this on, same thing as taking it off. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey, of course. Um, but just hand tighten it. There you go, nice and clean. Ooh, she's so pretty. Now, I'm not gonna put the oil in yet because the plug is still out on the bottom. All right, so I tightened the oil plug below. Um, tighten that with a wrench, don't tighten that by hand. And then up here, it's a good rule of thumb to clean out the area around it. Um, pull away from the hole so you don't get any dirt in there. You know what I'm saying? Push it away from the dirt. You don't want any of that dirt going in there. You could probably see some rocker panels or something in there. But tip: pour it sideways. Don't pour it like this or like that. It just it's designed to pour sideways. I don't know. It's hard to pour in video. And then just let it sit up front. You could squeeze it a couple times. Most cars won't overflow. Let it sit there for a minute, all empty out. Oil is a very hard thing to get, so might as well get every drop out of it. Okay, after you put the oil back in, you start the engine. Let the oil pump around for a little bit. Make sure it's not leaking underneath. I can see. Can you turn it off? And then you check it. Uh, I don't know where to check it. Oh, this is oil. The first time, you just wipe it off. Because oil's, you know, kicking up in the oil pan. And, and then. I'm going to get all the oil off, let it sit in it. So what it does, it's sitting in the pan. And then you can see, see that one hole right there? There's another hole further down from it, right about there. And you can't see it because it's full of oil. And as long as you're in between those two dots, you're good to go, which I am. So what I'm going to also do now is check the transmission fluid. Kind of go hand in hand. Start the engine. With the transmission, you want to do it with the engine on. So, same thing. Pull it out. Wipe it off. It's kind of hard to do it one hand, but you get the point. dots, they're hot and cold marks, add cold, uh, so I do need a little bit more, I'm going to double check it and then I'll just add some more transmission fluid, and then check it again, but that's what you do, once you do this, it's all over. Okay, for the transmission fluid, uh, it goes in the hole, well we saw it before when I was checking it, um, I did have to, did have to go and uh, get another, get some transmission fluid. 
So just pour it in there, it needed about a quart. Let that drain, start it up, check it again while it's running because it's transmission. Oil, don't have the car running. Transmission, car's got to be running to check these things. So that's pretty much it for doing an oil change and brakes and checking your fluids for Daisy. Saved me a couple hundreds of dollars by uh, doing it myself. So even if it took me all day, which it didn't, I'd been uh, had a beer. But if I didn't have a, you know, say if I worked and I made a hundred dollars a day, um, it would cost me more to to go to work than it would be to stay home and fix my car so things like that you got to think of when making purchases for cars and dealing with your life anyway so i will see you all later hope you take that into consideration and possibly start working on your cars any questions let me know below uh if you have any car questions i was an auto mechanic for a while so i could definitely help out with that no idea what i'm doing homesteading but cars I do know. Alright guys, I will see you later. There's my tractor tire and some jibber jabber. Peace out.